Wake Up to the Word. WMAR-TV and Heaven 600 present Grace and Glory. Well, good morning and welcome once again to Baltimore's number one gospel program. Because of you, we see another Resurrection Sunday and we thank God that he got up. Lee Michaels here, glad to have this opportunity to help kick off your Resurrection Sunday, and I pray that it will be a blessed day. And speaking of blessings, we're going to be blessed with uh, some spoken word to kind of set uh, the tone for the day. First, we're going to make our way to to the uh, Southern Baptist Church and Bishop Dante Hickman for our first spoken word. Then joining us will be First Lady Linyar Robinson for her monthly women's segment on this Easter Sunday. So sit back, enjoy, be inspired, and uh, let's check out the first spoken word right now on Grace and Glory. Welcome to the television broadcast ministry of Southern Baptist Church. And now a word from our pastor, Dr. Dante L. Hickman Sr. By the time of our text, my dear brothers and sisters, Jesus was making his final public entrance and appearance into Jerusalem. He had essentially lived his earthly life, having been touched by all of our infirmities and yet remaining the sinless Lamb of God. He had effectively established that the kingdom of God was at hand. He did so by the preaching and the teaching of the gospel. He had powerfully substantiated who he was as the Son of God through the performance of miracles, signs, and wonders among the people. And he had demonstratively impact the lives of his disciples by calling them from every walk of life and cultivating them to continue his ministry beyond his death, burial, resurrection, and ascension. And now he boldly but humbly enters into Jerusalem in the face of the religious and political leaders who had warrant and want for his demise. But they had to be very careful how they approached Jesus in this hour to execute him. Because the people that witnessed Jesus come into the city worshiped him. In fact, it was literally the worship of the people that insulated Jesus from the wickedness of the religious and political leaders. And I'm here to tell you, my dear brothers and sisters, that worshiping God, lifting your heart, your mind, and your spirit to adore God can have the effect of protecting you from all of the maladies, the miseries, and the meanness of people. Can I tell you today that sometimes the best thing we can do in the face of adversity and adversarial attacks is to appropriately worship God, putting on the helmet of salvation, putting on the breastplate of righteousness, having the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and the shield of faith to quench every fiery dart and attack of the enemy. Lift your hands and give God praise and watch God defeat every one of your enemies. Nevertheless, the Bible says in this instance that Jesus was not attempting to avoid the attack of the adversary. On some occasions, when they wanted to kill him, Jesus got away from them or walked out of their presence so that they weren't able to get him. But this time, Jesus did not come in quietly nor discreetly. He came into town humbly, reverently, spiritually, and making a lot of noise among the people. He demonstrated that there is a time to avoid the adversary. There is a time to not fight every battle, but then there also comes a time to confront the enemy and let the chips fall where they may. And it's important, my dear brothers and sisters, for all of us to note that Jesus wasn't just going through life and ministry haphazardly. He was not coming at life accidentally nor coincidentally but Jesus was moving with divine intention upon the assignment and the appointment that God had called him to. 
He knew, like we need to know, that the steps of a good man or woman are always ordered by the Lord. Subsequently, we have to know our assignment from God and our appointment with God. I've come to discover that it's my assignment to preach the gospel in season and out of season, in person and virtually. It's, it's my assignment to be the salt of the earth, to be the light of the world. It's, it's my assignment to feed the hungry, to heal the sick, and to liberate the oppressed. And Job said, when we have fulfilled our assignment, it's then our appointment to die and then the judgment. Paul said to us, for to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. My life is not just to be lived for my own personal enjoyment. My life is not to be lived just for the things that I want to do and I want to accomplish. But all of us have been born and created in this world with a specific assignment from God to fulfill. And then when that assignment is completed, then our death should be seen as a reward of great gain that will spend eternal life with our heavenly father and with the rewards he has for us. Subsequently, the arrival of Jesus into Jerusalem this time was different. The fanfare over his arrival really demonstrated his impact over time. Hear me that when Jesus had first come on the scene, people were initially inquisitive in the early days of his ministry. But this time, they were inspired at his appearing. Because when Jesus initially showed up, he showed up preaching repentance. He showed up preaching that the kingdom of God is at hand and that we ought to change our evil and wicked ways. But Jesus also followed it up by healing the sick and raising the dead and unstopping deaf ears and giving sight to the blind. So that now when Jesus was showing up, People were inspired by his presence this time. That's why, my dear brothers and sisters, you and I ought never internalize how people saw you the last time. Because I've discovered that over time, God can shift you and God can solidify you so that people will see you differently this time. The last time they saw you, you were drunk. But now when they see you this time, you are drunk not with the wine of the world, but with the spiritual intoxication of God. The last time people saw you, you were a wretch undone. But now when people see you, you are a worshiper of God because God has brought you from a mighty long way. And I think you ought to tell somebody, don't, don't reject me. By the last time you saw me without inspecting me this time to see how good God has been in my life. And I can testify that God has brought all of us from a mighty long way. The Bible says that the people were so excited about Jesus this time that they expended their energy just to exalt him. Don't miss that. They expended their energy to exalt him. The text says that they climbed up into palm trees and they cut down branches to praise him and to make a pathway of royalty for him so that the palm was not about a token to them, but it was a symbol of their reverence and their sacrifice for him. Hear me good, traditional Christian people who believe that this day is not special unless you receive a poem that has been bought for you by your church or your religious system. I need you to know that when Palm first showed up in the Bible, it was not because the church 
bought the palm or the praise for the people, but it was because the people of their own will and volition climbed up in the trees and cut down branches for themselves. Their praise came at a sacrifice. And could it be, my dear brothers and sisters, that God wants that from us on today? That Palm Sunday is not really about receiving a palm. It's really not about driving by and picking up a palm, but it's about using the palm of your hand to praise God for what he's done for you. I mean, can you use the palm of your hand to bless the Lord at all times? Can you use the palm of your hand to worship him in spirit and in truth? You see, I found out that that's the problem with the modern day church. Everybody else is sacrificing for somebody else's praise. But I stopped by to tell you that we are in a predicament and in a position where you've got to give God the sacrifice of your own praise. Sometimes without somebody helping you, you got to learn how to put your hands together and praise him for yourself. Can I ask you a question? What are you expending? What energy, what sacrifice are you giving to worship Christ? These people were so excited about seeing Jesus this time that they expended their energy to exalt him and they embraced him beyond external extravagance. It's going to hurt before it helps you. Here it is. The text says that Jesus came in, not riding on a stallion, not riding on a thoroughbred. Jesus came in riding on a donkey, a, a low animal, a stubborn animal. But the Bible says, says that while this wasn't a picture of royalty this wasn't a picture of riches that the people did not get caught up in the jackass as much as they got caught up in Jesus and maybe that's why God has us home during this Easter holiday so that we won't be so caught up in buying material things for what is to be a spiritual reality and transformation I'm preaching up in here. The Bible says that people did not get caught up on the fact that the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords was not coming in high and mighty, but Jesus was coming in lowly and humble because Jesus is not about the name brand. Child, Jesus is the brand. Jesus is not the building, but Jesus is in your spirit, in your your heart and in your mind and you ought to be able to lift him up whether you live in a mansion on a hill or not you ought to be able to praise him whether you drive a Mercedes or a Pinto you ought to be able to lift your hands and say God is still worthy of all of my praise and I will not make him about my material stuff but I'll give him who I am from the end part of my being. The Bible says that they were excited about the presence of Jesus so much so that they expended their energy to exalt him. They, 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 they went on to embrace him beyond external extravagance and they exclaimed their expectation. This is where I want to hang my hook because the Bible says they uttered out of their mouths Hosanna Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Now I need you to know that Hosanna meant save us now. What we are looking for a, a militaristic hero that will overthrow the Roman Empire that will take us out of this oppression and that will make us the authorities and those who are in charge. But Jesus said I need y'all to know that, that the kingdom is greater 
than the empire. And all of us need to recognize that, that, that no matter how much power we have, no matter what our prosperity, no matter what our politics, none of those things can save you. We're living in the wealthiest country in the world, and yet everybody is in isolation. Everybody is quarantined because there is no power that is above the power of our God. And can I tell you, my dear brothers and sisters, that you have to be careful that your expectations are not lower than the determination of God for your life. I just said something out of my mouth because they were looking for God to save them now, but God was looking to save them eternally. He was looking to save them spiritually. And you ought to text that to somebody that whatever you want, God wants more for you. Whatever it is you praying for, God wants more for you. So much so that he lives on the altars of your heart, making intercessions for you that you can't even utter, nor can you understand. And the good news of the text for Palm Sunday 2020 is that despite our motives, despite our lack of maturity, and despite our misunderstandings of who Jesus is and what Jesus came to do, he's still riding it out for our redemption. D don't get me wrong, my beard brothers and sisters, in times like these, we want God to do so many things for us, so we pray praise him to heal us. We praise him to deliver us. We praise him to provide for us, to protect us, to love us, and to save us. But I came to tell somebody that Palm Sunday was the day that Jesus demonstrated that sometimes he's got to override what it is that we want in order to secure our needs. Jesus didn't come just to be praised with palm branches and clothes on Palm Sunday, but Jesus came to die on an old rugged cross so that you and I might have eternal life and a relationship with God, our heavenly Father. Father, and I'm preaching this sermon for those of us who in this season can't see how God is working on your behalf, but I dare you to tap somebody and tell them and text somebody and tell them that God is still working on your behalf. You may not be able to see him and you may not be able to feel him, but he's still writing and working things out on your behalf and the reality is some of us are praying and we're praying Lord let it be over right now let this situation come to an end but the reality is he may not stop and satisfy what you want right now but can you tell somebody that if you trust and never doubt what you want from God is on the way Way. I'm here to tell you what God has for you. Don't give up hope. Don't give up your faith. Don't stop trusting and believing. And for God's sake, don't stop praising him now. You're almost where God wants you to be. And somebody is asking me, preacher, how do you know it's on the way? I know it's on the way because this Palm Sunday scripture demonstrates that Jesus maintains every one of his promises. I need you to write that down. I need you to take that to somebody. I need you to tell somebody that whatever God has for you, it's on the way because Jesus always maintains every one of his promises. I'm right in the text. 
He didn't ride on the donkey into Jerusalem at the peak of conflict just because he felt like it. He didn't just ride in just on GP, but the Bible says that he came riding in in this manner because it had been prophesied in the Old Testament through the prophets that this is how your Messiah would show up. Now don't hang up on me yet because I need you to know that you ought to thank God that I was not Jesus because if I came into the world with a mother that didn't understand me and a father that wanted to abort me and kings that wanted to kill me and disciples that would betray me doubt and deny me you better know in this moment I would be high cockalory I would be getting all of the glory I would have come in on a stallion but I thank God that we serve a Christ who did not choose his own convenience over his conviction to the word of God he did what the word instructed him to do why is that good news that is good news because if Jesus went through with it we can trust that he'll come through for us I need you to text somebody and say if Jesus could go through it we can trust that he will come through on every one of his promises can I preach like I feel it I think y'all didn't guess it I'm gonna do it anyhow you can trust that it's on the way because Jesus maintains every one of his promises and then Jesus maintains his perspective above our perception check out the Bible he kept on riding through Jerusalem he knew the people were wrong but he did not correct their expectations he didn't tell them to shut up he didn't tell them to be quiet in fact he told the Pharisees that if these would hold their peace then the very rocks will cry out for them and I need to park here parenthetically I know you in the living room I know you in the kitchen I know you in the bedroom I know you might be outside but has God been good to you has God made ways for you then you ought to come out of yourself and open up your mouth and give God the best praise you have because Jesus demonstrated that just because we get him wrong does not mean he can't get us right that's why we ought to thank God that even though we make mistakes that our God is not a petty God and you and I don't have to be perfect in order for him to provide for us somebody ought to testify I'm being blessed and processed at the same time y'all ain't said it right text somebody and tell them I'm being blessed and processed at the same time that's why y'all can't figure it out how some of us have some mess in our lives we still don't dot every I nor do we cross every T but God has still been good to us that's why amazing grace shall always be my song of praise for it was grace that bought my liberty and I do not know just why he came to love me so but he looked beyond my faults and he saw my needs good morning family may the Lord bless all of y'all real real good but lift up your palm the palm of your hand and shout whatever God has for me
me. It's on the way because Jesus maintains his promises. Jesus maintains his perspective and Jesus maintains his own praise. Did you hear what I said? You got to praise. I got to praise and Jesus has a praise. How do I know? Because he never came down to receive the praise of others. He kept on riding through their sacrifice and ultimately made his own sacrifice a sacrifice of himself. He was consistent in that he never accepted the glory of God. He said, why do you call me good? There's only one good and that's God, my heavenly father. And whatever you see me do, it's cause the father gave me power to do it. I'm gone. But Philippians chapter two, verse eight says, Jesus being found in appearance as a man, humbled himself, became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. And because he died, God has highly exalted him and given him a name that's above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. I heard the governor the other day declare that this Sunday should be a Sunday of prayer. Well, I thank God every Sunday. That's what church folk do. We call on the name of the Lord, but I think it's interesting because now the governor wants prayer because the governor and the president and the mayor know there's no power like the power of God. Shout yes. So hang in there because we will live longer than we die because he died. Whatever you want is on the way because he kept riding and because he kept dying. Your healing is on the way. Your deliverance is on the way. Your breakthrough is on the way. Your blessing is on the way. And you ain't got to wait until you get it. Throw up both your hands and shout glory, glory. Hallelujah. Praise him. Somebody, anybody, everybody ought to type it right on King Jesus. No man can hinder you right on King Jesus. Shout glory. Say yes. Shout glory. Say yes. Whatever you've been praying for, whatever you have been, been believing God about, his death on the cross makes it possible for us to first have a relationship with him. And then all of the resources come from that relationship. I'm so glad that Jesus committed to go all the way. And because he went all the way, he makes it possible for whatever we need to be on its way to us. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, it won't be long. I don't care if they say 30 days. I don't care if they say 60 days. It doesn't matter what the days of man are. Trust in the delivering power of God that he who has begun a good work in you shall perform it until the day Christ returns. God is doing something in this season 
And it ain't going to stop. I don't care what the scientists say. I don't care what the politicians say. I don't even care what the preachers say. It ain't going to stop until God says so. And when it's done, he's going to release his blessing and his healing in your life. You've been watching the television broadcast of Southern Baptist Church, where Dr. Dante L. Hickman Sr. is the pastor. If you desire to purchase a copy of this week's broadcast or any of our other media treasures, please call our media ministry at 410-732-8566. Join Pastor Hickman and Southern Baptist Church for any of our worship experiences. Visit our online community at southernbaptistchurch.org and like us on Facebook and Twitter. Be sure to join us each week at Southern Baptist Church. Welcome back and thank you, Bishop Hickman, for that inspiring first word on this Resurrection Sunday. Aren't you glad that he got up? Amen. Listen, we're coming to you virtually, as you uh, probably realize, because of the ongoing pandemic with uh, coronavirus, the novel coronavirus. Um, we want to keep things moving and be here for you in the process of us all making it through what has been a very tedious and arduous situation. With that being said, First Lady Lenyard Robinson will be joining us virtually virtually she'll be joining us and uh, she'll be presenting her monthly women's segment and, and right after that we'll have our second spoken word with dr jermaine johnson from word of life christian center right here on grace and glory good morning i'm lady lenyard robinson and i want to welcome you to the women's segment of grace and glory and it is resurrection sunday I wish you the happiest and most joyous Resurrection Sunday as we celebrate the risen Savior. I know and I trust that you are well and in the best of God's loving care this morning. And you're like me, I know you're at home, but you're still celebrating the risen Savior. Listen, this is an opportunity for us all over the world, throughout our communities, to take the time to remember what the resurrection is really all about. I know for me, I can't remember a Sunday that I was not in church celebrating Resurrection Sunday with my fellow church members. But guess what? It doesn't matter where you are. He still lives. He still rules. And he still got up with all power in his hands. I'm, I'm reminded this morning of the gospel story of the resurrection. You know, if you study the Four accounts from all of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John of the resurrection story. When you look at the details, all of the details differ in little details here and there. But one thing that is the central thing throughout all four accounts is that women were the first people to identify an empty tomb. Matthew says it, Mark says it, Luke says it, and John says it. And if you are a follower of Jesus and a student of the way he did things, you will know that Jesus has always been a champion of women. And for some woman who is watching today, you ought to be excited about that. Jesus has always championed women from the beginning, even when God chose Mary, a little farm girl who had no pedigree, no fabulous background. Listen, she was unnamed. She was unseen. She was in the back, but God chose her to be the carrier of the Savior. And then you remember when Jesus met the Samaritan woman. And you know, in that day, Jesus, Jews didn't even associate with Samaritans. You remember the story of how the woman was at the well at an off time drawing water and off time so that she could avoid being ostracized, so that she could avoid being gossiped about. But Jesus, the radical savior that he is, he took the time to minister to the Samaritan woman in her deepest shame, in her deepest pain. And then you also remember how Jesus championed the woman who was caught in the act of adultery. If it had not been for Jesus, who drew the line in the sand and stood up for her and spoke on her behalf, Jesus told her, go 
and sin no more. Isn't it wonderful how God chose woman as the first one to affirm her importance, not only in the resurrection story, but all throughout humanity. And on the contrary of the culture at that time, Jesus said, I want women, I want a woman to be the first to be able to declare that he has risen from the dead and he is Lord. And even today, Jesus is still honoring women, he's still upholding women, and he's still empowering women to be the first partakers of his miracle working power. And I don't know about you, but I am excited to be a woman who Jesus has chosen to speak to, who Jesus has chosen to use, who Jesus has chosen to love. And it doesn't matter what anyone says. Jesus chose a woman on purpose. And I'm talking to a woman this morning and reminding you on this Resurrection Sunday that Jesus has chosen you on purpose. He has chosen you to be the first partaker of his miracle working power. And so anything that is dead in your life, anything that's dead in your situation, the resurrecting power of the Lord Jesus Christ is still available to you as a woman of God. Now we're in our our homes, and I know it may feel unusual, but let our empty parking lots, our empty churches, and our empty sanctuaries be used as a sign and a wonder and a testimony around the globe that there is an empty tomb and that we serve a risen Savior who's in the world today. He lives, He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. Listen, the song resounds all around the globe today from your homes that Jesus lives, that he rose, and that he is a resurrected Savior. Be encouraged today as you celebrate the risen King. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, Dr. Jermaine Johnson. And co-pastor Michelle Johnson. And on behalf of the Word of Life Church, we want to say Happy Resurrection Sunday to you. What an amazing day in our Christian faith as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the one who defeated death, hell, and the grave. And we know that we are in the midst of a very difficult time, not only in our state, not only in our own country of the United States, but even across the world. Um, we are all feeling the effects of the virus, the COVID virus. But on this Resurrection Sunday, we give God thanks for being able to overcome. We give God thanks for being able to endure. And we give God thanks to be able to resurrect and to be able to come out of this. And so we can't live as those who are without hope and we can't live as those who are very fearful. But our faith and our hope is in the Lord God Almighty. And so we pray that today that you will remember and reflect on what Christ has done. And as Christ's death was given on Friday, on his resurrection Hallelujah. Sunday morning, we celebrate that the grave cannot hold our Savior down. And whatever is trying to hold us down doesn't have the power to keep us down. He's not here. He's risen. We have an amazing worship experience planned for you today. Come join out, celebrate with our dance ministry as well as our drama ministry as we show you an amazing Easter production in our worship experience. There is a word for you. Remember, it all begins with the word. For the word is life.
in light of the recent news concerning the coronavirus, we want to take precaution. And for this Sunday, we will worship with you through virtual worship. We want a witness in here there may be some stuff that you can't do but I dare you take boldness I don't care what time it is go to the father he's already expecting you and when you ask him he's gonna get up and what you couldn't do he's gonna make sure it gets done do I got a witness in the house today and you're gonna sleep better than you slept in a long time can I tell my brother go to bed tonight sleep my brother sleep my sister live live my brother live my sister why because the Lord should preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. But you got to keep lifting up your eyes. Somebody say, got to keep lifting up my eyes. Why? Because it impacts how I look. It impacts my sight. It impacts my ability to connect and witness and elevate your sight. For beauty and strength is in the behinds of the beholder. And instead of seeing fear, I see faith. Good God Almighty. Instead of feeling vulnerable, I feel victorious. Instead of taking residence in the low place, I focus on the high place. I'm reminded that he's a strong tower, that the righteous run into it and they are safe. I'm reminded that faith in this holy word, it inspires me to elevate every area of my life and that my faith has to be released as I go forward. Somebody declare my faith is working on me. My faith is teaching me. My faith is protecting me. My ability to trust and rely upon God is getting me through this one. My experience, what Pastor Michelle calls day by day grace. I'm lifting up my eyes in confidence. I'm able to ask God hard questions. Somebody declare I'm lifting up my faith. The psalmist declares in Psalm 24 that the earth is the Lord's and all its fullness. The world and those who dwell therein for he has founded upon the seas and established it upon the waters. The question is asked, who may ascend into the hill of the Lord or who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol nor sworn deceitfully but he shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. The psalmist reminds us at the conclusion of the psalm, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. Somebody declare because he is king. I'm confident that my help is on the way. The shepherd goes before you. And because the shepherd goes before us, and we're confident in the shepherd. We're confident in our God. We, we're confident because we remember what he's already done. We have some history with God. We've had experience with God. I don't know about you at home, but God got a reputation in my life of, of being able to work all things together. God has a history in my life that I've seen him work miracles before. God has a history in my life. I've seen him heal. I've seen him deliver. I've seen him set free. I've seen him provide. Though I don't deserve it, God has been good and he has gone before us. And as he goes before us, it's important for us to know that we must surrender in order to follow. We must surrender in order to follow. Jesus says, my sheep know my voice and I know them and they follow
follow me. You who are listening at home, tune your ears clearly in to the voice of God. While the voice of the president is being heard weekly, while the voice of the governor is being aired throughout the week, we gotta turn and surrender, not to the voice of the president, not to the voice of the governor, but we turn our ear and our hearts to the one who shepherds us, the one who governs us, the one who created us in his image and called us by name. We gotta follow and surrender to the voice of the almighty God, for he knows what's ahead of us and God trusts us to be led by him and to follow after his leading. My sheep know my voice. I want to tell somebody today, you can't do it your way any longer. You can't do it your way any longer. Countless occasions when a child, it doesn't matter the age, tries to do something their way. And as their shepherd, as their parents, you try and tell them you can't do it that way. You try to demonstrate for them that way won't work, but they are insistent on doing it their way. And then they find at the end, their way didn't work. Their way fell apart. Their way caused trouble. Their way brought them extra kids. Their way brought a divorce. But you can't do it your way any longer. But your way has to come and match with the will and the way of God because he leads us and he guides us. Matthew 26 and 2, Jesus says, You know that after two days is the Passover, and the Son of Man will be delivered up to be crucified. Matthew 26, 3 through 5, Jesus instructs, the Matthew, the writer instructs that there's a plot to kill him. But the timing of the plot, according to Matthew 26, 3 through 5, is canceled because of unforeseen circumstances. I want to encourage at least 50 of y'all that there was a plot to destroy some of us, but because of circumstances beyond our control, like purpose and affirmation, it's been canceled. I dare you, run around your house like you lost your mind because there was a plot to kill you, but guess what? It's been canceled. Somebody thank God that the plot that has been designed to destroy your life has been interrupted and canceled. I don't know who's stressing, or who's frustrated, or who's mad at the virus, but I want to tell you, when God does some stuff like this, I want to tell you what man meant for evil, God's going to use it for your good. Can I encourage some visitor who's listening to me for the first time that relief just came to you today. At this hour, your help has just arrived. The feeling of being overwhelmed and defeated just got evicted in the midst of a pandemic. The plot was in the form of deceit and trickery. But can somebody declare the plot has been canceled? Canceled, uh, the plot of depression, uh, the plot of frustration, uh, the plot of being overwhelmed, uh, the plot of disease. Uh, guess what? Uh, it's been canceled. Uh, somebody shout yes! As a result of the cancellation, I realize that I have even greater power and confidence to fight back. Good God Almighty. There are circumstances in place that has afforded me the opportunity to live and move forward. Can I stop there for a few moments now that the attack has been canceled? Can you live and move forward now that your past... Wow, what an amazing encounter. I'm encouraged to know that we can fight back. Why? Because you've been anointed for this. Not only can you fight back because you've been anointed this, but you've been assigned to this. Not only have you been assigned to this, but we are encouraged through the word of God today that you've been affirmed in this. 
Now we pray that you would take the word, take this experience with you as you live your life for the Lord. We know that God goes before us and he has promised to never leave us nor forsake us. You are not in this alone, but he who is risen is with you indeed. God bless each of you and happy Resurrection Sunday. Remember, it all begins with the word. For the word is life. Well, to start your Resurrection Sunday, I hope that you have not been disappointed for tuning in this morning. Of course, all of us have found ourselves watching a lot of television, and I pray uh, that you'll get a chance to watch uh, later today of uh, the presentation of Jesus from Sight and Sound. Check your local listings for that. I'm on my way out of here. Have yourself a wonderfully blessed Resurrection Day, and let us remember that we have cause to rejoice because he got up. And because he got up, we too can rise out of this particular predicament we find ourselves in and go on to accomplish some great things. So listen, have yourself a wonderfully blessed Resurrection Sunday, the remainder thereof. And remember to come back and join us again next week. Until then, as always, continue to walk in His grace and live in His glory. We'll see you next week. Promise, right here on Grace and Glory. We just can't do nothing with you. Listen to these words. Love, love is patient. Is patient love. love is kind. Is Love is felt is most, felt most when, when it's genuine. genuine. I had a whole lot of people in my love. life I've had my share of love. who abused my love. Abuse they manipulated it, manipulated it and, and took the strength of it and tried to misuse it. But I can't help you. But to give God glory today, when I, when I think about all I've been through, my and I still came out on the winning side, and I, know I don't know about you, but I know you that he favored me, because my, my enemies, enemy mm, they did try, they sing it y'all, but they couldn't triumph over me. Yes, because great is he that is in me than he that's in the world. That's what they did. That's what they did. They told a whole lot of lies. But God favored me. My character. My integrity. My faith in God. He favors me. But it would not fall. Would not bend. Won't compromise. God favored me. I spoke I life, life and, prosperity. and prosperity. I even spoke health. He favored me. They whispered, they whispered about me. They conspired against they me. Told they told a whole lot of lies on me. me. But God favored my me. My character. My integrity. My faith in God. My faith in God. He favored me. It will not fall. It will not fall. Not gonna bend, won't compromise. I speak prosperity, and I speak health. 